C.S. Lewis famously said, a homemaker's work is in reality the most important work in the world. For what do ships, railways, cars, mines, and government exist for except to ensure that people are warmed, fed, and safe in their own homes? It is such a great privilege to be given a home that you can manage and the influence that you have on society is no small thing because everyone starts out in a home and is raised in a home and as we grow up in those homes we move into being members of our culture and our society so the work that's done at home is absolutely so incredibly valuable now there are hundreds of aspects and habits of homemaking that we can talk about and we're going to discuss a few of them today so let's get started the first thing is establish the dream what are you aiming for? Write it all down. It doesn't have to be about expensive furnishings or a big fancy house. I've known a couple of homemakers who lived in less than ideal places with hand-me-down furnishings and thrifted quilts, yet their homes were filled with vibrancy and warmth and love. So what are your aspirations? Maybe you want to have organized closets so you can find things easily, or you want to be able to host family dinners or have friends over to build more connection. But whatever the goal is make sure you have a strong why because the why is what's going to keep you motivated and make sure the why is connected to something that will serve you and that will benefit you so for example instead of saying this bathroom is so dirty I need to clean it try saying I have value and it's good for me to have a clean space stop comparing yourself to others. Comparing ourselves to others is something that we've all engaged in at one point or another, but when you participate in this habit at its base level, it is incredibly unhealthy. We do, however, need people in our lives who are further along than we are, who have a bigger ideal and a bigger vision than we have, who have experienced more things than we have as well. Not to compare ourselves to them, but so we can be in inspired to grow. It's not about looking at how great they are and how we fall short. It's about looking at the potential of how great we can be. So if you want to compete, don't compete against other people. Compete against things like your procrastination or your negative thinking or any bad habits that you're trying to release. Competing against the person that you were yesterday is going to be far more effective. Have a basic cleaning routine that you can complete every day. This is not deep cleaning. These are just basic chores that you can do in a short amount of time to make your day go smoother. So on this list, I have things like opening up the windows first thing in the morning and making up the bed, then tidying up the bathroom and the mirrors or wiping out the sink if it needs it, tidying up the living area so it could be bringing in any cups that are there from the night before into the kitchen or tidying up some blankets. Then I like to sort out dinner and then doing any dishes, clean the countertops and sweep the kitchen floor and set up coffee and tea for the next morning. These are all small chores, but they keep everything running smoothly and keep you from feeling overwhelmed at the end of the week when you're doing other chores. Next, you're not going to have endless energy all the time. There's days where you're just not gonna have it in you and that's absolutely okay. There's gonna be times where you only have 50% and if you give 50%, that's perfectly fine because if you have 50% and you give 50%, you just gave everything you have. So just try to be as consistent as you can with the energy that you have. 
Invest some of your time at home into learning skills that will pay dividends for you in the future. For example, it may take you a few hours to figure out how to make a loaf of bread, but that skill will pay off big in the future because you'll save hundreds of dollars in not having to buy bread from the store. 15 minutes spent decluttering your closet gives you a more peaceful space. Learning how to hem a pair of pants or sew on a button will save you some costly repair bills at the seamstress. And one hour of meal prep gives you lunches for the whole week. I've said before that if you can get a decent meal on the table, that's 50% of your homemaking right there. And that's part of the reason why this channel is so food forward in many ways, because I've seen magical things happen when people are sitting around a table enjoying a meal. And it's also a beautiful way to connect with your culture and your heritage, and also enjoy the culture of others as well. And I feel because of that, I've been able to share so much of my Italian heritage with you through the beauty of food. And making nourishing food from scratch doesn't take a lot of time if you focus on simplicity. And getting into the habit of meal planning is very good because it takes the guesswork out of what's for dinner and it makes your grocery shopping very focused as well. Of course, not everyone loves to meal plan. So another approach could be to just have a half a dozen go-to meals or so that you always have the ingredients for. So for example, pasta with garlic and olive oil is a fabulous pantry pull dish that you just add a little Parmesan cheese to, maybe some chopped parsley if you have it, and that is a fantastic meal. Or if you have some chicken stock, some canned beans and frozen vegetables, you can throw together a wonderful soup in no time. And if you like those pre-cooked rotisserie chickens, buy two or three of them at a time, pull the meat off, put them in a bag and pop them in the freezer and you've got pre-cooked chicken all ready to go to add to soups for tacos or add to stir fries. Take some time out at some point every day to connect with yourself for your own personal development. If you're an early bird, get up early before everyone else. And if you're a night owl, then maybe stay up later than everyone else. Whatever works for you. If you have young kids, I realize getting up earlier can sometimes be a challenge. So just try to work it in at some point in the day. Some great things for personal development is if you're trying to think of ideas, one of the best things you can do is to read. And if you have trouble articulating your thoughts into words, the best thing you can do is write. Spend 15 minutes writing out your thoughts and you will articulate things a lot better. Spend some time doing devotionals or journaling or in prayer, move your body, stretch, exercise, whatever it is you choose to do, spend some time every day doing it because you are worth it. Invest some time building the skills and habits that you want to create that will move you towards the aspiration that you have for your home. So say for example, you want to start cooking from scratch. The first month or two, you should just be focused on one thing only, and that is cooking more meals at home. Don't worry about creating restaurant quality gourmet meals. That will come later as you gain knowledge and experience. Just focus on creating meals in the home on a regular basis and that will give that habit a solid foundation to stand on and eventually it will become second nature to you. Making our home the best place it can possibly be is such a worthy endeavor and all the effort that we put into making it a great place is absolutely worth it because small changes done consistently can add up to a big, big difference. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes of your day with me. I sure do appreciate it. Take care everyone and we'll catch you in the next one.